So what are macros exactly and what can they do for you in GP? Uh, GP allows you to record a sequence of commands inside GP including keystrokes and mouse clicks and then execute that exact sequence of commands uh, at the push of a shortcut key. This allows rapid accurate execution of common sequences in GP such as printing uh, sales order processing reports uh, with specific options selected uh, such as the uh, invoice, the format for it, the options such as printing customer item numbers, uh, including tax details, etc. Uh, furthermore, macros can be used to create a large repeating macro by mail merging uh, a base macro with spreadsheet data, uh, speeding up data entry. If you plan on using macros in GP, uh, you have to understand the limitations of them. They are not able to make decisions. You can't have if-then statements within the macro. Uh, they only execute a linear sequence of uh, events and commands. And if something interrupts that linear sequence of commands, uh, such as an unexpected uh, window that pops up, uh, the macro will be interrupted and will cease to execute. What are some best practices for using macros? My first rule would be to keep it simple. Macros work best when they are used to perform a series of uh, very straightforward uh, data entry functions, marking checkboxes, clicking buttons, that type of thing. Uh, the more complex the data entry required by the macro, the more likelihood you're going to encounter exceptions in your macro. Uh, resulting in the interruption of that macro. When you're recording a base macro, uh, so the first loop uh, to be used in creating a repeating macro, make sure that it will loop seamlessly and that the end point of the macro will flow into the beginning point of the macro. And we'll see that uh, in the demonstration coming up. Uh, and also add shortcuts for daily use macros uh, for macro, something like uh, choosing the uh, options in, in printing an ASOP invoice. Uh, set it up so that you have a simple key combination to use for it, and your clerks will be very thankful that you save them a few seconds every time they have to print a document. Let's dive right into a demonstration of recording and playing back a macro within GP. The controls for running macros are under the Microsoft Dynamics GP button, Tools, Macro. The main ones you'll be using are going to be uh, to record it. Uh, this one here also has a shortcut combination, Alt F8. Uh, and once you're recording it, it'll switch to stop, which will also uh, stop using Alt F8. Once you've recorded a macro and wish to play it, you can hit Control F8 to bring up the file selection to select the macro to play. Typically, I use the shortcut keys when recording and running macros. Uh, so let's try a macro that's just going to select some options uh, in SOP printing. I'm just going to grab a random invoice here. To start the recording of the macro, I'll hit the shortcut key Alt F8. Choose a title for my macro. Click Save. And now it's recording my strokes uh, and the commands that I issue. We're going to print, select an invoice, change to a different uh, report here. Select a couple options, print, select that we're printing to screen, and I'll warn you that this isn't a, a, an actual customized report, so the report itself isn't going to look like much. Uh, and click OK. And once that's up, I'm going to hit Alt F8 to terminate the recording of the macro.
Now to play that back again, I'm going to select the same invoice here, hit Control F8, brings up my file selection, select that sample macro we just recorded, open, and watch as it goes through all of the steps with a little ending saying that the macro has completed. That's already pretty nice. Saves you a lot of clicking and also perhaps even more importantly, saves you a lot of misclicking. A macro like that will always select the same options uh, and, and will prevent any sort of user data entry error. But how about if we want to kick it up a little bit extra by uh, adding a shortcut key so we don't have to do the control F8 and selection of the macro. We can do so by going onto our home uh, area page, right clicking in this left pane area, and adding a macro shortcut. Give it a name. Select our file. And select a shortcut key. Uh, the shortcut keys uh, are a pre-made list here. You can customize them. So we'll just set this as F3. And save our changes. And then let's go back into our invoice. And just hit the F3 shortcut. And here it goes. Runs our macro all the way through. One key press and multiple clicks and no errors from misclicks. Very nice. Wouldn't it be neat if you could also use macros to import data for GP uh, instead of having to use some sort of integration solution? Uh, well, you can. Uh, you can build a repeating macro uh, using mail merge uh, to join a base macro and repeat it based on a number of records from a data sheet. So I have pre-recorded a macro that essentially just uh, enters a new item. Something like this. Gives it a number, a description, a class, rolls the class, defaults down onto the master, and then saves the item. Uh, what that looks like is something like this. Uh, the macro that I recorded here, uh, and this is probably a best practice, uh, I, I, I enter two cycles of it, so I enter two separate items, and that lets me see uh, what the repeating sections of the macro are. So you can see down here up to about there. We have starting from the type two field item number uh, through to the end uh, for the second item and the first item also type two down to the end here. Uh, these first two lines uh, are specific to the macro itself and those won't repeat. It checks for the fact that the uh, IV, the, the item maintenance window is open and also gives us the version for the macro. Now that we've identified the repeating section of the macro, uh, we just take a copy of that whole section and save it into a Word document. Uh, note, again, it is just the, the single repeating section here, uh, and you'll be able to see the data that you've entered. In this case, there's an item number, a description, and the item class. Uh, so next we need the data that is going to uh, get placed into those fields by the mail merge. I have just a few entered here in the spreadsheet. Uh, item number, description, and class. So now we just have to do a mail merge to get them uh, collated together. Uh, under mailings, 
usually I just go through and do a step-by-step -step mail merge. Uh, the document type doesn't particularly matter, so I just go next, use the current document. So it's going to use this uh, block of macro as the uh, letter. Select recipients, use an existing list. I just browse for our list here. Items to import. I'm just using sheet one off of that spreadsheet uh, and mark that the first row of data does contain column headers in this case. Brings up a sample of the data in that spreadsheet. Looks good. Uh, you do have options here if you want to filter, uh, it, specify which particular uh, rows of data you want to include for the mail merge. Most cases you're probably just going to be including all of them. Uh, next, we need to write the letter. If we click on more items here, it brings up a list of the fields identified by the column header. So in this case, we want to replace the item number here. With the field from the spreadsheet. Just click insert and you'll get this with the double angle brackets around it. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for the description and the item class. that I am being very careful to leave the single quotes in there. So we have our three fields now inserted for the mail merge. Click through. Um, we can preview here. It shows samples, the uh, first record, the item number, the item description, and the class from it. Click on complete the merge. It goes through and merges, creates uh, records for each of the three uh, rows in that spreadsheet. If we edit the individual letters, then it will complete the full merge, produce a new document that actually has one chunk of macro, for each record in the spreadsheet. Uh, so we've built the repeating section of our macro now. Each time it'll run through uh, that item addition uh, for each new line in the spreadsheet. Select, uh, I just hit Control A to select everything, Control C to copy it, and then we need to get into our macro In this case, I've edited it down so the top two rows that are uh, always there uh, remain. And I'll just control V to paste the repeating macro in here. And then save. Now we need to run this within GP. Uh, so I know when I recorded it, I had the item maintenance window open with the cursor in the item number field and I will hit Control F8, select my now edited macro for the three files, or three uh, records. It goes through, and in two seconds it has added those three items. Again, test 100, our description, and our class. 101 and 102. Just like that. Uh, so you can see it did those three records very quickly, depending on the number of fields that you're adding, 
uh, when you're doing this sort of repeating data import type of macro, uh, it'll run faster or slower. So concludes our glimpse into the power of macros in GP. Uh, we've seen how to record and play macros, which is just a recording of a specific sequence of commands. Uh, we know that the macros cannot make decisions, such as choosing to click or not click a particular button based on uh, some variable, and it cannot ignore errors. So if uh, something does not come up as expected during the macro, a pop-up window does not pop up, or a pop-up window does pop up when it's not expected, the macro will error out, it will interrupt itself. Uh, we've seen that we can add shortcut keys for common daily usage sort of macros like print options. And we've also seen how we can import data into GP by using words mail merge function to merge uh, a base macro with data from a spreadsheet.